Hey, how about you, everybody? Welcome into this week's episode of the Auburn Live Recruiting Show. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor for Auburn Live on 3. Today is Wednesday, May the 31st. I'm joined, as I always am, 60% of the time. <laughs> uh, Mr. J and Mr. Cole Pinkston, how about you, fellas? How about you? How about you, brother? All right, all right, all right. We got some uh, we got some stuff to talk about today. We got some questions to answer, some questions from the corner. Another new segment ready to go um, on the back burner. Before we get to all of that, I want to say today is the last day of May, which means June the 1st is tomorrow, and this is a great Ooh. time to get those houses on the market, to get those kids moved, settled into a new home this summer, and this is where it all begins, the beginning of summer, folks. Give her a call. If you're looking for Auburn, Opelika, Lee County, looking to sell your home, looking to buy a new home, give her a call. Jessica Andrews with the Talents Group, 334-704-4442. She is a five-star realtor, as Mr. J. Head likes to, to point out. She's fantastic, folks. I'm telling you if, you, if if you wanted to get it done and get it done right and get it done top dollar, she's the one to call. Jessica Andrews with the Talents Group. Give her a call. Tell her we sent you. Some news coming out this week, folks. Let's see. On Sunday was officially uh, Auburn's move-in day. The class of 2023, all but one, have now reported to campus. That includes Sylvester, Sylvester Smith, the four-star DB from Munford. Uh, who he, he was kind of the last one. I think uh, some of our guys who knew him personally said he was uh, – finishing up a senior trip and was reporting soon after that. I don't know, but it sounds good to me. He was a little late, uh, but he has reported. The only one not reported, and this is what, 20 transfers, 21 high school JUCO kids, 41? So 42, well, 41 in all, 20 transfers, 21 high school and junior college prospects. Whew, that's a lot, man. Yeah, I saw almost half your roster, right? So 85, what's your halfway mark, 42.5? So you turned over all like forty nine percent of your roster. Wow, wow, wow! Um, let's see, and some others coming in this week. June is going to be official visit month, and it's going to be all month long. Auburn's got a huge weekend. We we knew of three guys last week. We knew three guys coming in, uh, and Jamonte Waller, uh, T.J. Lindsey, and Wyatt Simmons. Cole has some news. I believe it was yesterday. It was a Cole five star edition. <laughs> yes, five star addition, Jalen Bakway, Clay Chopville, which I think is crazy because I went up there, you know, I got a pretty good contact over there at Clay Chopville High School, and and he's 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 good about knowing where these guys are leaning, what they're thinking. He's like, yeah, and Bakway's shut it down, man. He, he's probably not going to take those official visits, and he had told me at one time, if he does take one, Auburn's getting one, you know, besides Alabama. Uh, this was a couple months ago, and he, and just a couple weeks ago, he's like, "Yeah, he shut it down. Not happening." And then Keith Niebuhr talked to him at at the uh, on three camp series that's been on fire this past week. He talked the NIL Elite Series, correct? Yes. yes, which has been awesome, man. It's been all over social media. Lots of big time guys, and Bakway's there, and he told Keith, "Hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'll be there this weekend." I was like, "Man, okay." Sounds good. I didn't expect that, but sounds good. It's never a bad deal when you sure. get a five-star defensive back to report for an official visit, right? Even if the chances are that he's going to sign with them, and I would say that there's still probably a very high probability that's what's going to happen, right, Cole? Yeah. And I think you would probably agree. But in the day and age of the transfer portal, it never hurts to finish second, contingent on what happens at the university that they so land at. So I can absolutely see where this is a play for the Auburn staff just to stay relative, keep that contact there, see if he decides he won't, he changes his mind. And if he doesn't, maybe he changes his mind once he sees Alabama's depth chart. Who truly knows? But, um, no, I, it, can't say enough about Hugh Freeze and his staff for the talent that they've been able to get on campus, that's for sure. That's the one thing that goes unquestioned in all of this. That's true. He uh, first visited since the new staff took over back in March. Cole, you had a story with him then. I think he came up for a, a practice maybe. Yeah. Um, and he said he wants to take all official visits. He said that and, uh, said that back then. I'm pretty sure Auburn will get an official visit. I want to take all five of my official visits, so Auburn would be one of my five. And sure enough, he lived up to that and is expected to be in uh, – you know, Hugh Freeze is still at the uh, SEC, uh, SEC meetings down in Destin. If, yes. if, I, if, I, if I think that's right. So yeah. you've got the uh, the linebacker, Wyatt Simmons, coming in from Arkansas. 
on uh, to visit on Thursday. I think he'll leave Friday. And then the other guys, the other three, I think, are scheduled to come in late Friday or Saturday and not and, and stay until Monday. I think that's when Freeze will kind of be back this weekend and be able to get some time with those guys. Um, I think Wyatt Simmons, Jay Head, the and Cole, you two, both of you guys, the, the key there is is Josh Aldridge. Yes. Mm-hmm. Long time relationship between Josh Aldridge and Wyatt Simmons' father. Uh, Josh Aldridge played for Wyatt Simmons' dad at Harding University, where <clears throat> Josh Aldridge was a all conference player and performer. Um, I, look, we talk about it all the time, but there's a very big relational aspect to recruiting, right? Like, you know, the highlights are what is the NIL playing time, get me to the league. But this sport still falls back on relationships. And when you have one as strong as Josh Aldridge has with this young man's father, that's always going to pay dividends. And now we're getting the first official visit of the summer session. You're setting the tone for anything that comes thereafter. And we all know that sometimes when you set the tone correctly, um, sometimes that's it. So getting them on campus first is always, always a big deal. And this is a guy – as a linebacker, yes, he's unranked right now, but he won't be that way for long, I promise you. Yeah. That offers from Clemson, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, FSU. Everybody's pushing to get this kid on campus. Auburn's got him on, and they got him on for a reason. Look, he can play the triangle. He can bounce off guards. He absolutely uh, will hit you, okay? This is a guy that can run and hit with the absolute best of them. He's a former wide receiver and defensive end, so he's a little bit of an athlete right now. But – I assure you guys, while he may not be as defined or ref- as refined as the word I'm looking for as some of the other linebacker targets, the upside on him is through the roof. And with that, I'm going to punt it to Cole. Well, I, you know, people like to get all out of sorts about Auburn offering an unranked guy or, oh, he's a linebacker. That means we missed on somebody. You know, well, you don't know that for sure. And, and number one, if, if Auburn's not finding guys like this with – However many months we have to go, I don't think they're doing their due diligence anyway. So that's their job. They're supposed to find guys like that. Um, and he, you know, he got all his offers in the past two or three weeks: Texas, Oklahoma, Clemson, all these, you know, top schools. I really think he is not a backup plan, but a hey, uh, get him on the board today. Yes, as soon as you saw him, it's time to get him on campus. It's time to get him on the board. He's he's is just as good as the other guys that we've got on the board. So I think, I mean, the quickness, like how fast this is moving and how fast they get them on campus, mm-hmm. I think that means something. Yeah. I really do. And, and you, like you pointed out with the relationship that, that there is with Aldridge, I think there was some groundwork laid before all of these offers came in. He already knew about it. Yep. There's no way he didn't, right? Uh, just putting two and two together. Right. Uh, but also I've heard that, yes, they knew who he was and – wanted to take a shot on him, but needed to see him, needed to see a little bit more, and they saw it. And, of course, never hurts to see all these other schools seeing the same thing and jumping in. Of course, I think he reported Auburn's offer maybe one of the first ones. I think it was May 9th. It was. But I just think this guy, and I wanted to make make him, you know, I wanted to put some stuff out here, out there on him, his, his film, all that kind of stuff. I'm just impressed with him as a player. Wyatt Simmons. So anytime you see something like a guy burst on the freaking scene the way this guy has, it's almost like these schools had video of him and were like, man, we really like this. I want to go see him in person. Yes. Yeah. They all go out there at April eval period and see it like what they see. And then in May, here come all the offers. June, here come all the visits. And, you know, in the span of six weeks, this dude went from a relatively unknown to one of the most highly coveted linebackers of the month, at least. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, think of it. No, I mean, look at Auburn's class last year and Tyler Scott, a guy who is a nobody committed to Arkansas State. Oh, yeah. Everybody loved his measurables, but when they got an opportunity to see him live and in action, okay. Then the offer started flying, and you saw nothing but his star on the rise and ended up being a high four-star defensive back. Yep. So – this is a situation where I think you're going to see, okay, he's not ranked right now, but let's see where he, where he's going to be. And for me personally, if Britt Venables wants you and offers you, all right, 
good enough. I, I don't need to. I mean, Jay had doesn't need to do an evaluation on this <laughs> linebacker. He can probably play, right? Like, I mean, yeah. I think we can trust that evaluation well enough. Uh, he will be here. He was uh, as well as Jalen Mbakwe. We talked about him, the five star Alabama commitment. Javante Waller, arguably yes. the top uh, Jack Edge rusher. Yes. One of the top uh, guys on the board. And then TJ Lindsay, kind of a. Uh, well, he's not he's not creating a lot of excitement, but that's because he's probably just a mid three star guy at least right now. You both of you, both of you guys like him though. Yeah, I'm I'm still learning about him. Okay. You know, he just transferred to IMG. Uh, oh, I did not know that. Auburn's had trouble there, and, and maybe it's good that he's a late addition to IMG, and he's not the guy that's been at IMG. If you're Auburn, I I don't know. I don't know what the uh, the voodoo is over there, but you know. Uh, he's a guy. Any from Arkansas? He is. He's originally from Arkansas. They seem to have something going in that state a little bit. Obviously, with Walker White and, and knowing all these people there, and um, White Simmons, uh, Hughes spent a lot of time there. Obviously, Josh Aldris has spent a lot of time there. Yep. Yep. He had some others on the board earlier uh, that are now off the board to Arkansas. Understandable. Uh, but when you see a good player out there and you're going for him like this, and you're willing to give them an official visit, then there's something there. There's absolutely something there. Now you like you saw a couple of weeks ago, Sean Seviano or last week, he yeah. visited, you know, probably not going to officially visit. That that tells me that Lindsay's higher on the board. Yep. And uh sort of a similar type player too. So I, I think Lindsay's interesting. I, I don't know much about him though yet, to be honest. Okay. I, yeah, he's more of a three tech, four eye type guy. I think Seviano is more of a, a one tech test slash zero nose, so a little bit of a different position, but both interior defensive linemen. But once again, look at the offer list and where he's going to take his official visit. So he's going to Arkansas, Auburn, Texas, and Texas A and M. If those are your top four schools, that tells me that you're an SEC level competitor. Okay, you're an SEC level defender. So that in and of itself you know, I mean, kind of justifies the evaluation if you're, you know, if he's also visiting your peer schools and those would absolutely be peer schools. Yeah. So how is he as a player? It's hard to tell. Look, when you are looking at a kid that's playing against, you know, high school football in the state of Arkansas, you're not talking about a state that produces a ton of NFL type talent, right? This is not a Louisiana an Alabama, Georgia, Florida, a Texas. So it's a little bit questionable competition he's faced up against. But overall, he looks like a productive player to me. He's a guy that can get vertical penetration. Um, and I'm interested to learn more about his recruitment. Maybe we'll find out this weekend, get a good uh, in-depth interview with him as he leaves. Jeffrey, uh, I, I want to know more about Jamonte Waller, too, to be honest. That guy, he, he is um, – Can you play the jack at six feet tall? I don't know. He's pretty electric off the edge. I'll Jeff Holland that. wasn't much taller than that, was he? Look at Jalen McLeod. No. I mean, he's, what, 6'1"? Oh. Yeah. So, I think it depends on how they deploy him within the scheme. If they're going to try to play him as a pure four-down guy, or, you know what I mean, like, more of a run setter, no, absolutely not. But I think if you're going to use him as a traditional, as a yeah. true outside linebacker, they can come off the edge and create havoc there. I absolutely think that he can thrive in this defense. So it's really dependent upon how they utilize him within the scheme. I agree you know, with that. You know, Sterling Dixon talked about this and how Auburn wants to use him as a middle guy the first two first two downs, then on obvious, obvious passing downs, push him up to uh, to rush the passer. I don't know if that's just what they're telling him or if, if, that's, if it's a possibility to keep the same guy out there. On, basically, you're not coming out is what they're telling him. You play inside, and then you'll drop down and rush the passer. Uh, I, yeah, I think there's a possibility for that. And Austin Armstrong, who's the defensive coordinator at Florida, who is a protege of Ron Roberts, is planning to utilize uh, Jamonte Waller that way. I would imagine that Ron Roberts probably sees him pretty similarly. You know, and I don't know that. Um, I don't have any connection to Ron Roberts. Um, and I haven't seen our recruiting pitch to him just yet other than playing the Jack. But I got to think there's something to that, Jeffrey, and that they see him as a three-down guy, somebody that can play on the inside and on the outside, so kind of a combo backer. Jeff Holland listed it at 6'2 uh, on Auburn's official roster, so that means he was about 6'1". Yeah, right, right. Um, all right, well, let's uh, – Jay, listen, 
we wanted to uh, – we've got some interest on this offensive line, and you brought some interior linemen, interior offensive linemen. Um, and we've talked about maybe doing what we did last summer, which was naming five at each position that we think Auburn can get two of. Is that yeah. kind of where you were hoping this would – Absolutely. Okay, good. So right. we're going to we're, we're going to bring back the segment of five targets to know or five to get to five four that, two how about yeah. that depending on yeah how you how you see it and I, at this point I think we're probably looking at two to three interior offensive line targets in this class I think that's probably from the high school ranks that's what you're looking at is two to three and one of those may be a combo guy that could play inside could play outside so you could probably utilize him multifaceted but I'm going to list off some guys and I would love to hear your opinion or if you have somebody else that you would sub in that position and we'll kind okay. of go that way. all right so the okay. first name on the board of five targets that you need to know Reese Baker would, there anybody, you go. would anybody disagree that Reese Baker is absolutely a target on the board oh, oh no he definitely is I think he's probably interchangeable between interior and tackle but right. yes absolutely on the board my only, I would have him in Auburn's class. My only question would be interior. Is he? I mean, y'all know. I'm looking him up. Is he a tackle or interior guy? I think he's, he's a combo. He's listed okay. as the tackle, and I think he could do it. He, he's one of those guys though that's sort of in between right now, and and you take him and go. Well, we'll figure this out later. Definitely have him on there though. Yep. Yes. The next name, Caleb Holmes. Mm, yeah, 100. percent Coming in for an official visit next weekend, I think he is a high priority target. A guy that's a natural interior player. I, judging by his mobility, I, I I don't know how he is snapping cold, but I got to think he's probably even got the versatility to play center, contingent on how they cross training. I think so. I think he definitely could. He's he's a um, he's a mauler uh, to me, and he's not a bigger guy. He's sort of a little bit lean right now. Right now, he's got the frame to be a little bit bigger and and add some weight. But as as a more lean guy, as an athletic interior offensive lineman, he can maul. You know, he can he can take a single block, or he can get in the combo and just run it out of there. So, I like him, man. I really do. I think he's higher. Uh, I think he's real high on Auburn's board. I agree. And look, if you're looking at a guy like Avery Jones right now, now I think this kid is more physical. Like you said, he mauls more than Avery Jones does. But you look at the body. And I can see his body growing into what Avery Jones is right now, specifically with the athleticism like you talked about. Sure. Um, next name on the board, Jamison Riggs. Definitely. Yep. Another one of those guys is a combo player to me. I think he could play tackle at some point. I think he's probably an interior target and probably best suited to play left guard. But, you know what I mean, tackle in a pinch for sure. I mean, you got to mm. have guys that can swing. Right. And, I, and I've been hearing good things about Jameson Riggs as well. I put out an article on him today talking about some, you know, some things that I've heard on him. I really think it's between Auburn and Clemson, and Auburn's got a chance to stuff Dabo in a locker once again, like you Ooh, like to say there, J. Ed. God, would I love to break that one out. And he's coming in in two weeks, I believe. Yeah. Yes. And that's, that's a guy that Walker White's pretty heavy on, and I think it's interesting that Walker White, when he gets in on these Clemson Auburn battles, there's there's something there that you think Auburn might have just a little bit of a an aid, right, from him. And, yeah, and here, he, here's why I chose Auburn over Clemson. Yes, yes, and, and he's receptive to Walker White, from what I understand. They're they're pretty they're they've gotten close. It's a good thing. We'll talk about one more that's close to Walker White, Casey Poe. Yeah, he might be number one on the list. <laughs> No, he's, he's if he's not, he's top three, right? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think for the staff, he probably is absolutely top two interior interior offensive line target on the board. The competition, though, is thick there. Mm-hmm. We all know that you're matched up against Alabama, A and M, Oklahoma, Clemson, Georgia, Texas Tech is in there. Believe it or not. I believe it. And, look, their head coach, Joey Jones, is a fantastic recruiter. He's got connections all throughout that Dallas-Fort Worth uh, Metroplex area. Um, and I'm not going to be shocked if he's the head coach at uh, Texas A&M this time next year after Jimbo gets fired. But <laughs> Joey Jones? 
not Joey, Joey McGuire. I'm sorry. I was about to say, yeah. yeah. Yeah, not 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 the former Alabama wide receiver slash yeah. South Alabama head coach. My bad, Joey McGuire. Joey and McGuire, Mountain Brook so. head coach. <laughs> he was Mountain Brook head coach, I believe. He was. He yeah, was Mountain Brook, then Birmingham Southern, then South Alabama. Is that where he is now? No, nah, he got whacked from South Alabama a couple of years back. <laughs> he was he like, whacked. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jay, had you so, said Re- Reese Baker, Caleb Holmes, Jameson Riggs, Casey Poe. Yes, and last but not least, okay. Preston Tiamu. Is that yeah. how you say it, Cole? I've been saying Tal- Talmua. Talmua, you, you're probably right. God knows you don't want me enunciating that last uh, you, mean, you don't want to follow me either, but <laughs> yeah, you – yeah. Looks like Talmua to me. Let's go with Talmua then. We'll, we'll ask uh, Ben Aguamaya how you say that. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know that's that? right. But, yeah, he he's – the only reason I, I had reservations of saying that Casey Poe was number one is because I then thought of Preston Talmua. Yes. I think he could be at least one, two, or three on the board. I don't disagree, Cole. I, I mean, and look, we're looking at a top five right now, and I think that probably all of those at this moment, and this isn't a knock to him, but every one of those but Reese Baker are a take as of today. I can't imagine none, it, us Auburn telling any one of those guys, eh, hold off, man. You know what no. I mean? Like we're, we're not ready to take your commitment. No. Yeah, right. And these are all guys, the last four that I just named, are all taking an official visit to Auburn in the month of June. Mm. So we could know how this interior offensive line group looks very early on in the summer, guys, because I can't imagine that the majority of these recruitments are going to drag out throughout the year. It's funny you said that, Jay, because I remember talking to Reese Baker not too long ago, and he was going to wait until I believe the season to take his official visit. Is that right? I think so. I'm almost positive it is, Jeffrey. And that would make a lot of sense if you're reading tea leaves here. Let's yes. bring these guys in here right now. Let's see if we can't nail them down. We've got Reese coming in in the fall, who we feel good about already. Sure. Yes. In this, in this hypothetical conversation that I'm having with the Auburn coaches. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, let, 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 we've got time with him, but let's get these guys in when we can, especially a guy from Hawaii where if he's playing on a Friday night in the fall, look, you're not going to get him. You're not going to get him to a game as much as it, you would like to. Absolutely not. Yeah. Versus not get him. Madison Academy, who you can get down pretty much whenever you want. You're yeah. going to get Casey Poe back for a game, I bet you. Yes. I bet mm-hmm. you're going to get Caleb Holmes back for a game. I bet you're going to get J- uh, Riggs, Jameson Riggs back for a game. And obviously, uh, Baker will be for a game. Yes. Yep. So, uh, I-, I like the five. I-, I couldn't come up with anybody else. If I, uh, that, 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 that would be my five as well. And now, are we saying if Auburn could get two of those guys? I think they might even take three because there are several of those guys on the board that could also play tackle. But I'm saying if they did, if they were, if they were able to get two or three of those guys, home run. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big time. Home big run. time. I like that, man. Maybe next week we'll uh, go to offensive tackle. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a good way to start. We'll always start with the offensive line. Everybody loves the hog molly. We'll, we'll start in interior and we'll work our way out and back. Um, all right, let's uh, let's move on. I think we got some uh, some questions from the corner loaded. Man, I tell you what, I've enjoyed this segment, Jay Head. You had a fantastic idea. I think everybody has. Uh, we've been taking uh, questions from the corner Auburn Live on three message board, and, and getting them out over here. It's got some fantastic uh, questions from our subscribers. If you haven't subscribed to Auburn Live on three, man, this is the perfect opportunity because this June is going to be loaded with recruiting information. Um, it's already starting, and uh, there's going to be visits every weekend. Give us a try if you haven't already. Auburn Live on three, twenty nine ninety nine for six months. That's five dollars a month. Get in, get signed up, join our community. We would love it. All right. Question number one: AU Net Champs. Uh, are we done with basketball recruiting for the year? Do you think we will add another one to this twenty twenty three twenty twenty four team? It's a great question. Um, Justin Hokinson has done a fantastic job. I think after uh, David uh, Baker Mazzara, yes. Ma- Mazzara committed, uh, I think about two weeks ago, Justin Hokinson had a fantastic article on Auburn Live on three talking about what he thinks will happen next. And he thinks that, the, that with um, Baker Mazzara, that is uh, number 11 scholarship. Auburn has 13. Each team has 13. 
looking for a 12th. Yes. Potential like a – basically you're looking for a depth piece at this point. You're not looking for a starter. You're, you're not going to get a starter unless uh, – I don't think. I don't think so either, Jeffrey. I mean, the only place I could think – is if some kind of grad transfer were to pop in that is a, you know, a one-year guy at the three. That's the only spot I can see somebody wanting to come in and compete with a guy that's coming up from junior college that hasn't solidified himself yet at Auburn. But I, I'm hard-pressed to come up with a name that would be that person. So I'm with you. I think they're looking for a developmental four or five, and Justin has reported that as well, that they can kind of groom because, look, you're in a situation where you're obviously going to be losing two of your front court players moving in the next year in Jalen Williams and Janai Broom. There's no question on that. Jalen's out of eligibility. Janai, I believe, has a COVID year that he could utilize. But you were lucky to get him back this season. So I, I can't imagine that they would think that they're going to have him moving forward. So you need somebody to help build, to help build depth to pair with Chaney Johnson moving forward into next year. I don't know of the name on the board yet of who they're going to target, but that's the, that's the position to me that makes the most sense and probably the place they're going to, uh, to plan to attack just because of the unknowns moving forward with that position. Hey, if you haven't already, man, uh, Justin put out a new article about uh, midday on Wednesday. Some fans, On my mind is what he's titled it, basketball roster, Hugh Freeze comments on suspensions, SEC scheduling, and more fantastic piece from Justin. Go check that out. He addresses some basketball as well as some football in there. Um, all right, AU Nat Champs. Let me, let me let me not fall behind here. AU Nat Champs. We got to give him a how about you there. All right, R four, R four. Can you guys estimate what next portal season will look like as we try to close the talent gap? Will it depend on how this high school class seems to finish out? So, where do you see Auburn? We certainly, don't want to see Auburn signing 20 something kids out of the portal next year. Right, Cole? You, uh Hugh Freeze would rather not, okay. but I think that it'll be similar. I, I'm thinking around 15, maybe more, because a lot of these guys are grad transfers and you also have guys that might go pro. So there are going to be similar roster spots other than what you're feeling from the high school class. And I think you just need that one more year to push you into you, you know, those guys getting another year, the guys you just brought in who just moved in on campus getting another year. I think it's going to take one more year of heavy portaling. Okay. J-Head? 12. I, okay. I think it'll be about 12. I think it's going to be significantly less than the 20 we took this year. But I think they are going to try to take some high, some impact high school kids, some junior college prospects in this class, and then they'll take about 12 from the portal. I think they're going to be – um, they're going to have a better idea of probably what's going to be in the portal this time next year. They're not going to be transitioning staffs. They're going to know exactly what they're looking for and what they're going to target, how this roster is going to look. So probably the number is going to be 12, and then they'll start to try to decrease that to more along the lines of what Georgia and Alabama do every year. Mm -hmm. is around five to eight guys to kind of subsidize where you may have missed in recruiting or if you have like a massive gap in your room, something happened. Well, yep. this is not – it's just a coincidence only, but I was going to say 12 to 15. You don't want to see a huge dip back to hardly any, right? No. Because no. you're going to you're, – you're, there's going to be some trends. You want to see a steady decline in the number of transfers that you're taking each year until you get to that handful of guys where you're just filling needs yeah. and yeah. not roster depth chart pieces. You know, you're just filling needs. Boom. You're, pick, you're cherry picking, just like Georgia and everybody, everybody else should be utilizing the portal. Uh, so, well, that's good stuff. Uh, Rice DP wants to know, how much of an impact does Walker White not making the Elite 11 have on his ability to recruit others in this class? I don't think it has anything on that. I think, uh, Yeah. I, no, I, don't I, think I, anybody, I don't think anybody's going to go, oh, dude, he didn't make Elite 11. No, I ain't listening to him. Well, I think it's if he went and had a terrible showing, that might be a little different, but he didn't, you know, yeah. he didn't participate. So it's different. Did it hurt Arch Manning last year who didn't compete? Uh, it's kind of like the guys that, I mean, in a way, it's not exactly like this, but the guys that hang out of the combine and go, yeah, you know, I've showed enough. Yeah. It's a little bit like that in this case, and that's not what he was doing. He was, you know, had an injury or whatever, but, you know, if they already seen what he can do. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. There's been a lot of interest. I didn't realize this was such a big deal to fans. I didn't either. I didn't My either. I've heard the question a lot. 
Yeah, I think hey, this is flag football is always a big deal to Auburn fans. <laughs> I mean, we're talking seven on seven flag football, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Skelly. They used to call it Skelly. Yeah, Skelly. Yeah, have it. but realistically, I think what most Auburn fans are worried about is going to hurt his overall rating because he's not going to be there in front of the national guys, and there's some prestige that comes with the Elite Eleven camp. To me, this actually increases our, our chances of him having a bigger effect on the class because now you get the opportunity for Walker to be here in the summertime. He's not mm -hmm. training for the Elite 11. That's right. He can come over for an official visit weekend and help work some of these offensive linemen, wide receivers. It's not going to surprise me at all if you see Walker White here on June the 16th. He will be. We've got a massive amount of targets in town. Yep. I was just about to say that. He'll be, I guarantee you. Um June the 16th. Yeah, I think there's going to be eight to 10 official visitors that weekend. Yeah. You got to think Walker White's going to be here. Um, yeah. yeah. I think he actually alluded to it earlier in our conversations back before. He was going to at least try to. Uh, yeah. All right. Maybe AU10. Name the biggest flip, the script moment for Q in this recruiting class. Uh, one for offense and one for defense. Slight plot twist. Can't use Coleman or Phillips. Oof. Name the biggest flip the script moment for Q Freeze. Okay. You can't use on offense and defense. Can't use Cam Coleman on offense. You can't use Joe Phillips on defense. Mm. Mm. Let's, All right. Okay. Well, let's throw out some possibilities here. Are we talking Kevin Riley? Are we talking uh, Nick Marsh? Are we talking, um, uh, uh, you know, Landon Thomas, Caleb Odom? One of those tight ends. I'm I'm going down positions. Are we talking Casey Poe? Are we that, talking that's, that's the one big OT? I'm thinking Casey Poe. Me too. For offense. I, I really think that one's realistic. I think Auburn has a legitimate shot. I it, it would be the I mean is what there about Perry more, Thompson? I you know, I thought about Perry Thompson, but it would be. Yeah. Yeah, the options that's what I'm throwing out here. I th for whatever reason about Casey Poe, I I I I I feel what you're putting down, Cole. Mm. I mean, I think Auburn's kind of like a little dark horse in this cat's recruitment. I do like, too. Would you be absolutely shocked if he signed with Auburn? I wouldn't. Mm -mm. I wouldn't be shocked. Would I call it an upset? Absolutely. For sure. That's the reason. Because yeah. everybody that's involved here, I mean, and and Georgia and Alabama are really involved. So is Clemson. So is everybody else on his board. I mean, he's one of the high, most heavily recruited players in 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 the class of twenty twenty four. So landing him just with that is huge. But also pulling the number one offensive yeah. guard or interior offensive lineman in the country, according to on three from huge. Texas and from Texas. Yeah. To me, go ahead, Jeffrey. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I want to stay with, stay on offense. I'm about to shoot the defense. Uh, to me, and I've got my offense and my defense, and I don't think defensively you guys are going to agree with me, but you'll see. We'll take us to it. All right. Perry Thompson on offense for me. If you're talking about a flip the script moment, flipping an in-state wide receiver from Foley, Alabama, if you pull that off, that is an absolute shot across the bow at the University of Alabama. Yep. Okay, that, that is the definitive moment that everybody knows, okay, Auburn is for real right now. Now, I don't – man, I, <laughs> I've been on the record as saying I just can't see it. But I saw where our guy Andrew Bone over there on the Alabama on three side said, look, I'm not overly worried about Jalen Mbakwe coming into Auburn this weekend. We, the staff feels pretty solid. Perry Thompson is the one – that you need to pay attention to because if anybody is going to flip, it could be Perry Thompson. Mm. Now, he didn't predict it, but he said that's the one that you need to pay attention to. And when the Alabama recruiting guys are going, hey, it's a possibility? Yes. That's, that's, that's a, a lot. big deal, right? That's a big deal. Been talking to Frederick Nandy, huh? I guess he has. <laughs> <laughs> but, listen – my guess is they're going to get, try to get Perry to shut it down when he goes to Alabama this weekend. I firmly believe that. And if he visits Auburn, we'll see what happens. But that would be the flip the script moment on offense. Sure. On defense, for me, it's Jalen Crawford. Landing oh. Jalen Crawford over Florida, over LSU, that's a big-time moment in this, rec in, in this recruiting class, and it's going to give you a lot of momentum. You already got Walker White, which was the definitive moment to this point. 
stuffing Dabo in a locker for a quarterback, I mean, that is the moment up until this point. But taking Jalen Crawford away from Florida and away from LSU, two places that consider themselves DBU, that speaks volumes to what Auburn, what, what West McGriff and, uh, and Zach are doing with the defensive backfield. I like the Jalen Crawford because I think Auburn has a, a, a better shot with him, and he's a top 100 guy. Yeah. yeah, You know, you'd like to see Demarcus Riddick. You'd like to see Sterling Dixon. You'd like to see um, some other big – I'm not saying Jalen Crawford's in a big name, but uh, at least he's not an in-state kid committed elsewhere. Correct. Right. right. But you take him uh, – Jalen Crawford's a big deal. And, and I think Auburn's got a – I think we've talked about this before. Gun to the head – I've got him going to Auburn right now. Right. Yeah. Um, well, hey, that's good stuff. I like that question. I like Where that you question. Got on the side? Yeah, I was trying to uh, – let me throw out some more options like I did the uh, DeMarcus Riddick. Yeah. Is Sterling Dixon, uh, that flipped the script guy, is uh, – um, who's the edge coming in? Uh, Waller. Yeah, Jamonte Waller is – I don't know of any defensive tackle that would just – you know, you're not going to get Jeremiah Beeman. He was kind of the guy who moved the needle for me the most at defensive uh, tackle. Um, defensive back, they don't really – I said J- Jalen Crawford, to me, I can't think of anybody better than him because I think Auburn's got a really good shot with him, I think. But uh, is he be, that flip the script guy or is that somebody, in my opinion, is that somebody that Auburn would get last year, the year before? Do we talking before or after Harson was fired? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Auburn still got some dudes. I mean, they still finished top fifteen with him here. Yes, they did. Uh, well, the first class in his first class, obviously the second class. Well, he didn't make it to the second class, but um, yeah, they they did. They finished, I think, number seventeen in the country. Um, and as I put the other day, the blue chip ratio just went up. Yeah. And Caleb Burton and. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, Demario Tolan to that class, so that class is, it looks a little bit better on paper now than it once did. Yeah, you're right. My pick would be KJ Bolden. Ooh, yeah, that's a good pick. I actually took the question as, "Hey, give us the one that you think is going to happen." That's what. That's kind of how I took the question just now. Oh, you I, got Auburn getting KJ Bolden? I, I'm not saying that. I think he's the next most likely on defense. Okay, I hear you. Yeah. Split the script, guys. After Jalen Cross, I hear you. Okay. I hear you. I like I, it, Cole. I, I move him ahead of Demarcus Riddick, where I once. Felt I hear you there, and, and I, I put it on an article. Said no, I don't feel great about that one right now. Although I will say, this is the same source that made me feel good about Auburn in the, in the first place was the one that told me, "Look, you're going to see some twists and turns in this recruitment, and it's going to go all the way." Yeah, dude. being being that he has not changed anything as far as I mean, we've had all these reports come out and all this, and but. Him, he's been committed to Georgia the whole time. That, to me, is not a twist or a turn coming from him. So that means I think there's more coming from that one. I just keep an eye out. Right now, Alabama seems to have the momentum. That doesn't mean it's over. But I would still put K.J. Bolden as the next most likely. Ahead of Sterling Dixon. I wasn't going to mention Sterling, but no. (laughs) (laughs) So so you would have – Crawford, Bolden, and Sterling Dixon, those three guys. Yeah, with Bolden being number three, probably, or at least on the same ground with Dixon. 2A and 2B. All right, I like that, Cole. I, I, I like that. Um, that, that I, I agree with everything y'all just said. I don't have anything new. Um, I don't have any – Yeah, I think Jalen Crawford. Um, I don't feel like Auburn signs K.J. Bolden. Um I don't know. I, with Sterling Dixon, I think it's going to depend. In my opinion, it, it's not always until this until the s- script is flipped. Yep. I will I will assume the Alabama commitments are signing with Alabama unless they don't want them. Yeah, I like it, and I think okay. that's I think that's a stance that has held up over time, and proved me wrong. And look, I would love yes. to be proved wrong. I completely but. agree. I believe it when I see it. And when I see it, I'll believe it. There you go. <laughs> until till then, I'm Missouri. Is that what, or Montana? Yeah, it, one, whichever one you want to call it, brother. Yeah, there you go. We Missouri. Packer Wood Ten wants to know with the new scheduling proposals. Curious as to who each of y'all would want to keep as our three permanent games if we do the nine game schedule. 
give us a little – explain to us, Jay head as though we're five, of what's going on. So right now you have a debate of whether or not we're going to stay with eight conference games or we're going to move to nine conference games. And within that nine conference game slate, you would have three permanent opponents and the other six would rotate on an every year basis. If the eight – if we do the eight-game scheduling model, it would be a one permanent opponent and then a revolving seven. So if we go to the nine, my three permanent opponents that I want to keep year in and year out are Alabama, Georgia, Ole Miss. Those are the three I want. Um, I reserve the right to change that in five years when Lane Kiffin is no longer the head coach at Ole Miss. But those are the three as of today that I would want. Obviously, Bandy's the layup because you need a breather. But I just I – lo- I love rivalry games. I love games that matter. I love games that mean something. And that game means something to the Auburn fan base right now. My three would be Vanderbilt, Missouri, and Kentucky. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I love it, dude. Hey, we'll we'll, we'll see Auburn play the other guys in the championship games. (laughs) Yeah, right. There you go. Uh, For uh, I I would hate to see Auburn lose the Georgia game uh, or the Alabama game. Um, For the third one, I could go Ole Miss. Um, I could go LSU. But I understand that you know you need to lay up if you're going to have those two guys because those two those two teams aren't going away. We're not going to yeah. see Alabama uh, under Mike Shula ever again. No. All right. right. We're not going to see Fear the Thumb ever again. Not in our lifetime. Probably so not. Get not them our, anyway. Yeah. yeah. So so if you're going to put Alabama and Georgia, both of them, in my opinion, aren't going away for a long time. No. You you, you pick out the the easiest one and put them on there. Cole. Uh, I mean, I'd hate to lose the Auburn LSU game personally. Me too. Me too. But I'm with y'all. You know, Georgia Bama, you got to have something. So maybe Mississippi State. Old there you go. Here I, you think, go. I think I uh, think a Mississippi game is probably. Good. I like it. I like and, it. And for those that are in, having a freak out moment about the potential of it being an eight game schedule moving forward, that that's the way that, that things seem to be leaning right now, because ESPN is not necessarily ready to give extra money for a ninth conference game guys if we play alabama every year and you play georgia every other year not that big of a deal okay i mean you're still going to get you know i mean the the longest rivalry in the south or the oldest rivalry in the south it's just going to be every other year not a catastrophe right i hear you i um i gotta admit though i wouldn't mind seeing texas on there well, am I seeing Oklahoma on there? No. Tennessee or Florida for me. Oh, I'd, like the, I'd like to see the Florida rivalry come back a little bit too. That's great. Back in the 90s. It's always That's a awesome. tough game, man. Always. Spurs <laughs> loved him from Terry Bowden. Oh, God, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, book out a basketball question for us. Has Auburn moved on from LeBaron Phylon, or is he still in play? He's, in, he's still in play. Yep. Uh, if so, is there someone else at the two, three that is higher on their board? I don't think so, man. Uh, th- there's a shift in. There's a shift in scheme. Yeah, going on right now at Auburn in recruiting scheme, and it's. I, I think we've written about this, so I'm not. It's not I'm not big of a hot dude. Bruce Pearl's getting fed up with this high school shit. Yeah, to be yeah. honest with you, he's sick of it. He wants to lean heavy into the portal. He does. He's tired of developing talent and watching that talent walk away. Whereas if you pour, if you procure that talent out of the transfer portal, they can't go anywhere. And if you evaluate right. properly in the transfer portal, you're already taking a season product that's ready to play and produce that you can get for two straight years. Dude, I, I don't know that Auburn will take more than two high school kids ever out of a class. I, I really think, don't. I think three might be the max. And that's Maybe. If you're turning over a big roster, and and we are turning over a big roster next year, so maybe we sure. get to it. Sure, that's, that's pretty smart. I like that. Uh, I, I I I think it's bold, and I also think it's going to become more popular. I, I'm, I'm I was talking I, I was talking with the the girls basketball coach uh, Johnny uh, Rogers, mm-hmm. and um, she you know she went heavy in the transfer portal. And I was talking to you know the the basketball uh, the high school basketball kids. Mm-hmm. Dude, it's, 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 you're going to get left out a lot now. You're, you're going to have to work your way up. These kids that could sign with the Auburns and the Mississippi States, you know, uh, girls, 
um, in the past and could work their way up to be a two-year starter at the juniors. And this is not for women. I'm talking about men too. Sure. Uh, you're going to have to go get those experience at JUCO. You're going to have to go get that experience at SEMO or wherever else you're going to go and then right. work your way. You're going to have to go to the minor leagues. Yeah. Well, I, I think in a case of maybe Sharif Cooper or JT Thor, these guys that you bring in from high school and only play one year and go, I, those guys weren't fully developed. Yeah. I mean, you didn't get their best basketball, in my no. opinion. Now, Jabari is a different story, and he's going to keep going, but he was more polished, right? Jabari and uh, who's the three man that went number six overall to the Cavs? Uh, Isaac Okoro. Isaac Okoro. Right. Chuma, so sometimes Chuma, uh, Chuma, like, Chuma. Yeah. So these guys, you know, fifty percent with those guys are just over fifty percent. Where you're saying this guy was good enough to take that one year, as opposed to now with the portal, you go, well, I mean, I know I got a guy that's proven here, and he may be one year too, but at least I know he's going to be good. Hey, I'll just go get another one next year. Right. Right. You're going to have to do it anyway, high school or portal. I agree. And I think that's kind of Bruce's stance. Either we're taking McDonald's All-Americans mm -hmm. or we're taking transfer portal kids. We're not taking – We're taking one and dones. Or we're yeah. And, and Aiden may be a two and done just because he it requires a little bit more growth. But principle still the same. That kid's a first-round ta talent. If everything, so it's the hot Pettiford. Yeah. If it clicks right, those are both first-round type mm -hmm. guys. So, yes, the Baron Phylon is still in play. I think they're still going to press for him. I think Flory Badunga is probably the guy that they want in this class. Um, there's a lot of Alon uh, Alonzo Mourning to his game, a lot of Bam at a bio to his game. Just Bruce that loves rough, him. Yeah, that rough and tumble five that just doesn't – you know what I mean? He's, he's just a dominant force. But, uh, no, I'm with you, Jay Lee. I, I think the lean into the transfer portal is there. I, I think it's an avenue that Bruce feels like he can compete in and that NIL is in a space where it needs to be to go get those kids out of the portal too because that's the thing. You're not just fishing out of the transfer portal. You also got to be fishing with some bait out of the transfer portal, and that bait is NIL. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Johnny Janai Broom didn't come back because he wanted another year of college. <laughs> yeah. Not not only because not, not only that, right. Uh, it, there needed to be some compensation there as well, brother. I mean, yeah. you're talking you, you you having to match second round money. He, yeah. he he had a nice deal, and good for them. Congratulations to OTV. Yes. Congratulations yeah. to Bruce Pearl and Stephen Pearl, both of whom. Uh, re recruited Janai Broom very, very hard, very heavily. And then OTV, On to Victory, Auburn's collective, NIL collective, stepped up without those guys. Janai Broom's in the second round, right? That's what Bruce said. He, he's a, he's a, he's in the NBA next year. So, yeah. good job to uh, the Wolf and his, uh, his subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh don't want to hear him complaining because OTV just just oh, he, bought, bought Auburn five or six wins. He probably has something to say Sunday night. We'll, we'll see. see. All right, Wolf. <laughs> come come on in a howling, big dog. Yeah. All right, Rice DP's back. He wants to know which offensive line do we have the best chance to land as of now or even post June OTVs. Kind of matches up with what we were talking about with the interior guys. We'll hit the o o OTs next weekend. But I think Reese Baker – as far as the best chance. Yes. Yeah. Reese Baker, Caleb Holmes, y'all jump in here. Um, Caleb Holmes. I would say Caleb Holmes because I know he's a take right now. Um, I'm, I'm, I think that's the guy. And behind him, I'm going to go Jamison Riggs. I think there's some confidence there. I agree with Cole on that from, from who I've talked to. Now, I don't think they think it's a done deal or anything like that. But right, those are the two guys I'm watching right now. And then as far as offensive tackles goes, man – there's Auburn's in on several. This would be a good segment next next week, um, because you've got guys like you know Jonathan Daniels, Calhoun. Uh, you've got uh, I just looked at it earlier. Damn it! Um, who are some other all uh, big Cohen Cohen Eccles is a guy. Yeah, C O E N. Hey, just hear me on this. Auburn loves him. Okay. Okay. Is he a tackle or a guard, Cole? He's listed as a tackle, but he's about six three. Okay. Close under six four, so maybe an interior guy on the next level, but feet like a tackle, there is no doubt. All right, now I will tell you this, and this is something I was told, with the scheme that Philip Montgomery and Hugh Freeze run, you don't have to have traditional style tackles. 
You can get no, you can not. get by with guys that have good feet and good Dylan looking, Wade. Right, a Dylan, Dylan Wade type because there's going to be a heavy RPO and play action aspect, aspect to this offense. So maybe this is a guy that you recruit as a tackle because of the system that you employ. Mm. Okay. That's why that's why Jaden Muskrat could play tackle for Philip Montgomery at Tulsa because he's got good feet and it didn't matter that he didn't have a great reach. You know, he, he really doesn't. He doesn't have that tackle reach that you would want in the pros. Right. Yeah. But he was able to move people off the line at the edge. And that was that's what they needed. Some other guys on here I'm looking at Ethan Calloway visited. Uh, yes. Fletcher Westfall will visit. Kevin Haywood will probably come back. Um, he, he is definitely coming back. Okay. Yeah, he's on, he's on an OV for the 16th. That's the one to me right now that I'm Who, watching. Haywood? Yes. Yeah, Cole just great, had a story about him. Hearing great things on Haywood <laughs> okay. once again. So, so pretty, Auburn's, in, Auburn's in a good spot heading into June. We'll see what how things shake out, Rice, after June uh, with these offensive linemen because you, you, you've got a really good portal class. You had some high school – you kind of want to keep that momentum going. We haven't seen Auburn do that in a long time, uh, especially along the offensive line. Oh, Jonty, 21-04, are you surprised at the way Hugh and his staff have has flipped the overall feeling of the program so quickly? No. Okay. I'm not. Uh, I thought he was the guy that could do that. Looking at the candidates, obviously Lane Kiffin was the guy we talked about in, in – you know, he's kind of boomer bust. You just never know what he's going to do in recruiting or on the field. But I felt like the most steady guy was Hugh Freeze. And not only that, he's recruited well and he has recruited well out of the transfer portal. I don't think he got enough credit for the portal players he got at Liberty that were perfect for what they needed to do and why they were successful. So looking at that, that was one of the other reasons why I thought he was a great, you know, candidate before he was hired because he was going to be able to re recruit out of the portal. And I had seen enough just from the last staff and just from what I'd heard about Auburn's NIL program and different things that I think we used the word sleeping giant as far as portal recruiting went, or the term. And I really believe that came to fruition this portal cycle. Yeah, top five on every recruiting website uh, throughout the industry. Didn't we say sleeping giant? If if all these things get aligned, if you got the right coach, the the right staff, nil, you could really kill it in the portal with the situation the roster was was in. And could he have done much better, really? And we've talked about that too. Don't think so. No, it, it, I think the only thing that probably would have helped them quicker is if they had landed a quarterback in the first window. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. And that probably would have expedited some things. But other than that, I mean, I, I can't really argue with anything that they did in the portal. I was I was going to say the only thing that could have been would you prefer Grayson McCall in December than Peyton Thorne in May? Yeah, that's that's a tough call. It, it isn't is. it? It is on paper. Yes, on paper, I think Grayson McCall is the perfect quarterback. He would have been here for spring. Yeah, it would have been the perfect situation. Obviously, it didn't happen. So, what's your next best option besides the kid who went to Kentucky? But from everything we know about the McCall situation, it was going to happen. Right. Oh, it was done. It was done. Too. Yeah. So again, that 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 falls under this. Hey, Auburn's is kind of this sleeping giant when it wants to be in the in the transfer portal, and you can get things done. All right, Nash Tiger fourteen are Cam Coleman and Andor Perry Thompson day one starters if they sign with Auburn. That's the question for you too. Uh, day one starters for a true freshman and wide receiver. That's pretty tough to do. Yeah. Um, as as it sits today. If you're they not a contributor, well, I th I'd go as far as starter for both of those guys. If you're looking at what you got right now or what okay. you have coming back, but now that's going to change. Yeah, before they get there, but yeah, it, I'm with you there, Cole. It, it's hard to project forward because what does Camden Brown do? What does Amari Kelly do? You know what I mean? What does Caleb Burton do? You don't know what the growth and projection is there just yet. Yeah. And we'll wait and see in fall camp. What we know is is that you got. A Jair Shorter, um, who's got one to two years left. Um, you just brought in a, a transfer from Jackson State in Shane Hollywood Hooks. It's got one year left, so you know he's moving on. But what does the maturation look like for some of those younger pieces? It's hard to say. Yeah. And one of these guys be better than one of the names I just listed? I think there's the potential for that, for sure. So probably if you got both, only one of those would start. 
But if you only land one, then I, yeah, I think the potential is there for them to be a day one starter. Okay. Oh, Hulk, if you want, if you coach for Bama, which was a uh, mm-hmm. popular phrase back in, was it 90, 2000, something? It was the Mike Shula stuff, wasn't it? I thought it was Honk if you sack Brody. I, I remember Honk if you sack Brody. I didn't oh, remember yeah. the other one. <laughs> it was, they had Franchoni, Mike Price, Mike oh, Shula. Yes. They had like three coaches in a span of three months. Oh, uh, do you agree that portal recruiting is far more important, valuable than high school? I do not. For 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 immediate success, absolutely. Yes. Long term, hell no. Correct. Right. Yeah. I'll leave you with this. How many guys, if you watched the NFL draft this past year, how many of those guys that went in the first and second round were transfer players? That's an interesting Ooh. study. I don't think it's a lot. It's not. So you have you have a outlier four? every once in a while. Okay, four in four, the first three. round, like Joe Burrow is like an outlier, right? That doesn't oh, happen a lot. Yeah, you know, what I mean, it, you you have transfer situations, but typically speaking, the large majority of your roster, the upper end talent on your roster that you collect is going to come out of the high school recruiting scene. You're going to yeah. cultivate it, you're going to develop it, and you're going to retain it, right? Because yeah. it's a lot easier to retain talent than it is to acquire talent. And what I mean easier to acquire, I mean by monetary purposes, because you're going to be paying up to get a premier talent out of the portal. Yeah. The prices Ooh. that you pay for portal players by comparison to what you pay out of the high school ranks um, is about double right now. If the sta- if, if the information I've had is correct mm-hmm. with regard to NIL, it's about double for what you're paying for getting kids out of the portal. Yeah, you don't want big portal classes because not many people can afford That's just expensive. It is, dude. It's 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 hell. You, want, you got twenty contracts you're trying to come up with in one class, like Auburn did. You don't want to do that every year. You can't afford to do that every year and keep yeah. the Camden Browns and the Jarquez Hunters happy. Correct. Yeah. It is so much easier to retain. That's why you see Georgia be successful when they target kids in the portal because they can throw big big amounts of money at them. Um, it's why, I mean, look, you've already got – most of these kids don't want to leave for the most part. If they're happy and they're thriving in the system, their friends are already there, they don't want to move on. They just want to make sure that they're financially secure. So it's significantly easier to retain kids than it is to acquire. Mm. Um, and so for that reason, look at who your championship teams are year in and year out. Look at your NFL draft situation. Most of those guys are not transfer players. Now, you can raise the floor. We've all talked about that, and you got to do that. you got to create more competition. But to create where you can be on the high end of the spectrum, it's got to come from the high school junior college ranks. I love it, man. Let's uh, let's wrap it up there. Anybody got any how about you this week? I only have two. Yeah, I, I got one. Okay, okay. Rice DP is getting one for me for saying our boy J.D. Piquel. And, and J.D. does a fantastic job with On3 Network when he mm-hmm. said that uh, my man um, – God, I forgot his name now. Who's the dude from Lethal? Gary Busey was his oh, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said he said JD looks like Gary Busey. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he, I, think, I think JD responded back and said, greatest compliment I've ever been given, or something like that. So okay, JD's, so JD's, JD's good people, man. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's good people. Um, I, I tell you what, Rice also uh it was on a thread that got um got locked. But uh, I see you, big dog. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing some he was doing some posting it got locked but he was doing a good <laughs> job I'm, I'm gonna give old rice dp how about you? <laughs> uh cole uh bug mac is my one this this week bug mac bug mac b-u-g-g-m-a-c-k it's just b-u-g space m-a-c-k that's what i said <laughs> Got the, got the picture of Albie there. Okay, I'll, I'll be, I'll be. I, I've got uh, H Wilson. Uh, how about you, the H Wilson? I think he's a new guy. Appreciate him, man. How about you, to good fan? Tell you what, good fan is a good poster, good man. Good he, he, good. He's good stuff. Uh, big how about you to him and um, all the guys that came in. And listen, if we didn't get to some questions, I tell you what, one thing we could do, Cole, J Head, you too, on that post on the corner. If we didn't get to their questions, maybe go in there and hit them up uh, on the corner. 
get Absolutely. to those because they had some really good questions. We just couldn't get to them all. Hey, uh, we're going to wrap it up there, folks. Again, if you're looking for a house in or around Auburn, Opelika, Lee County, uh, looking for the – she is a specialist when it comes to selling, folks. Give her a call, Jessica Andrus with the Talents Group, 334-704-4442. Give her a call. Tell her we sent you. Look for Sunday night. We'll be back 630 uh, for the call-in show might have some official visit news by then but we'll certainly be turning the phone uh, and the topics over to you guys the callers we appreciate everybody listening we appreciate everybody watching for jay here for cole for zach in the back i'm jeffrey lee man y'all stay in that left lane see ya <laughs>